Any scripture bring, look, I took for granted what you said, yeah. but I need to now question the reliability of the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. How can we be sure these are the statements attributed to Prophet Isa But so to give you an example, so if you, if you were to say, I don't know if that's the case, I don't have any examples, but let's say you take this cover and they were doing things differently to what the Prophet said or what was, you know, would you say that as a result? The what scholars will question this. They will say, why are the companions of the Prophet doing something supposedly said something different they will question that this is one thing that will be first thing that will come to our mind why is the speech and action different it needs to be reconciled yeah, but so i think but would you agree that that is at least something to be looked into as to is the, prophet, the message of jesus universal or not that could be a yeah, yeah. The, the the universality of the message is two things one about someone saying i am an universal messenger and another thing is actually looking at the message and see whether the message itself can be applied universally right so two things so we looked at the claim it looks like the predominant understanding of the text according to Jesus' own statements he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of israel if it wasn't there then i would have not much of a case the fact that the scripture itself is a testimony of what he said a, a localized message then next thing i need to ask is okay if there is any chance that he may change this mission later and he made it in, 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 initially maybe he was sent only to these people but later he expanded his message then we need to look at his message claim you can look at no problem i don't have a i don't even go into looking maybe he claimed it universal of message we have to look into his message does this message of christ reflect universality of teaching teaching that will give us guidance at all times at all places we come back to the same thing. I gave you three examples. I can give you more and more and more until you come to a point where you realize the guidance is not complete within the Christian text. Well, I think, well, I think that's an interesting point. I think a separate point that maybe we can come back to is whether the Christian guidance is indeed complete or not. But I think. Do you think it's complete? I think you can, well, I think you can derive, yeah. Most, I think it, the fundamental, what does complete mean? Like, is it a matter of having the right principles from which you can derive? He said, the, the so, paraclete will guide you onto all the truth. So the truth of a matter, uh -huh. that's what we need to establish. Yeah. Any matter that arises, we need to know the truth of it. But so for instance, you would argue that for instance, the, Quran, the Quran guidance is complete, right? Yeah. But the Quran doesn't mention explicitly, like you were saying before, modern technology like... Technology it doesn't have to. Right? The guidance can be... Yeah, so the guidance can be complete without mentioning everything. Without, but having the foundational principle yeah. in which the guidance can be derived. Yeah. So do you have something within the scripture in which you can say, look, we have something in the scripture which says we can derive these guidance. Yeah, and I believe that in, yeah, with the Christian guidance, you can, I think the only thing that, and I need to look more into it, is the question of divorce. I'm like, is that a problem? You know, what would you do? But it has an answer to interest, it has an answer to drinking. So those two are... Okay, governing the, the world according to the, king, the kingdom of God. The, the fact, What's the answer? Governing our life according to the kingdom of God, the laws of God. Governing our life in a communal setting according to the Sharia of God, the law of God. Yeah, but you have lots of, I mean, canon law is a thing, right? The Catholic no, what, what, is the, what is the Christian church giving us the laws? For example, now, oh, I want sorry, the laws... I have a question on, on, point on divorce, actually, that I just remembered. Is okay. That, uh, some Christian churches allow divorce, right? That's the thing. That that's, like, that's unscriptural. This yeah. is going against the church, just like they allow homosexual marriage is unchristian yeah, and, and unbiblical it doesn't make it true it just simply says they're going against the holy no, scripture then by that token you would say the quran also goes against like what because, like what well because the, the the reference to the, the, the reference to divorce or lack of divorce and everything is taken well, no. from the bible right no no no, from no, no. The, old... the quran legislation of the quran is from god yeah we do not take our legislation from the previous prophets. No, 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 but, in, but you're saying the, the reference to divorce or not, that's a biblical thing, right? There's nothing in no, the Quran. In your, in your case, yeah. no, the Quran has specifically laws of divorce and marriage. Yeah. I don't need to go to the Old Testament to read what the law is and apply to, to me. Islam has its own laws and regulations for complete um, guidance for the entirety of mankind until the world comes to an end. In Christianity, if I were to ask you about governing a community collectively through systems of governance in terms of crime punishment economic system political system you will find that it's deficient in well, those systems it's deficient it, it, it is a matter of it's not a matter of dispute i'm saying it from an outset I mean, it's not 
you have had Christian states that have been able to govern themselves. No, no, it, it's not a matter of dispute. You do not have laws of governance. In fact, all you have is given to Caesar that belongs to Caesar. It doesn't have its own autonomous laws and regulations. Christianity doesn't have the foundation in which it can have autonomous governance in terms where God's law is implemented. Because the law of, for example, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life for a life, is abrogated by Christ. It's no longer applicable in Christianity. So what do you do when someone commits a rape? Someone commits adultery? What do you do if someone commits adultery? What's punishment? According to God. Law of God. Not according to human beings, but according to law of God that is derived from the scripture. Someone commits adultery. What is the consequence to that individual? Do you punish this individual by destabilizing the societal infrastructure? Or do you say, uh, let the one who has no sin cast the first stone and no one else do that and then she gets away? What is the solution? No one can punish another adulterer in Christianity. Yeah, but, uh, so no wonder adultery in the Western world is so rampant because there is no solution. But there's, there's, there's lots of things for which the Quran hasn't specified. No, no, let's not about the Quran. Let's talk about universality of Christianity. Let's see how Christianity as a universal religion has a solution to how to make stable family, stable society. And we know a family can be broken when people have outside relationship of marriage sexual relationship outside marriage includes fornication when you're not married and adultery when you're married so when you need to stabilize a family unit and society at large through the family unit you need to have a solution for someone who's committing fornication or adultery what is the punishment and the deterrent that christianity can offer to make the society stable stable family Stable community, stable nation. But according to the Christian, they don't need to follow the laws, so the laws become redundant. So, it's, it, because, Christ, because you believe that Christ died for your sins, right? No, so that, it, but that doesn't mean you don't follow the laws. But <laughs> that's not the same. But that, 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 you have to, to be a good person. But that violates, that violates what Paul came with. That's, that's my point. Jesus is saying that think not that I've come to destroy the laws of the prophets, I come not to destroy but to fulfill. Yeah, for so verily I say unto you, it's in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, right? Yeah. And Jesus says in the Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 15, that if you love me, keep up the moments, right? But that violates against what Paul came with, because Paul said Christ died for our sins, he nailed the law for us. So, even following the laws... Yeah, but you still, you still need to follow Jesus, and Jesus has some very specific teachings and principles that you follow, that, that but, then replace that. But, 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 so are you saying that you can reconcile Paul's uh, teachings with the teachings of Jesus? Because they I, 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 I agree. Uh, like, I'm, I'm actually, I mean, we haven't really talked about this, but I'm more like, I'm like, what did te Jesus actually teach rather than what the latest the of the Trinity like, and stuff? I'm but, not but Paul, but Paul, with all due respect, Paul did not encourage to follow the laws. That's my point. Jesus on the, on the other hand saying, follow the law. So the yeah. point is, if okay. Christ died for your sins, then... I don't think that, that Jesus died for your sins. You don't believe I, I Jesus don't believe died for your sins. So you, so you traditionally have to follow the, the, the Old Testament. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, mean I, I would look at Jesus' te teachings. I, there's a lot of issues about Christianity. I'm, I'm not here to debate this. Really, you know, say it. I'm not against asserting that Christianity is correct. But that's very, very correct. important because you believe, because you, you you put forth a proposition that you believe that the laws that are found in the Bible can give you solutions. So it's important to understand where is your belief? Do you believe that you have to follow the law or you don't have to follow the law? Because when Paul was uh, was preaching his gospel to the Gentiles, he never encouraged people to follow the, the laws because Jesus died for your sins. So are you a traditional Christian that follows the Pauline understanding or are you following but then, the... Yeah, but then you have to, in order to do that, you need to also agree with the fact that Jesus is God and everything, which is something that I, I have issues with. But I think that's like a different method to talk about that. I'm, I'm more interested about what... Can Islam disprove the fact that Christianity is correct or not? But Christianity if is not... So. A, but Christianity was never meant to be a... Like, I, I'm talking about from the teachings of Jesus, not, not the doctrines of Christianity that you have today. Mm -hmm. If you strictly go by the teachings of Jesus, he never mentioned that he was sent for everyone. Well, so that's yeah, we discussed discuss that. We discussed that. that. But, uh, but, <laughs> but I know. But what, what's happening right now is you are you're trying to find any um, verses that suggest that Jesus was sent for everyone, but you're ignoring his specific um, understanding. So, for example, 
that the Quran mentions in chapter 62 verse, uh, verse 2 that, uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon to the Ummiyun, to the Arab nation, right? Now if you read this verse like isolation, right? Why are you ignoring the other verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explicitly mentioned that he was sent for everyone? So similarly what you're doing with the Bible, you're ignoring Jesus' specific no, 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 uh, I'm not, statement. Not, no, I'm saying yeah. that Jesus himself was sent just to the Jews and Jesus' ministry was focused on the Jews. Yeah. But he instructed his disciples to go and expand that to the whole of the world. Okay, that's so the, that's, if you read the Bible, that's what it and if you, uh, where, where is that proof? Can, what proof? How do you the proof that? that Jesus told everyone to go to different parts of the world and... Oh, I mean... The, that's, really, that's some of the passages yeah, that she was sharing that, earlier. Matthew and Mark. 28, 19, the, the Great Commission. Don't baptize the nation. The name yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, one of yeah, them. We the, okay, here's yeah. the issue. Eusebius, who was one of the famous church fathers, when yeah, he you're was. Yeah, you're going to talk about interpolation. No, 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 not just interpolation. When he cited uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, uh, in, the, in the Council of Nicaea, never once did he quoted in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He didn't quote Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, the way how it's now found in the Bible. Yeah, so, you're, so you will not find that. Yeah, yeah, so you're saying that, that but I agree, but the point that we're talking yeah. about is, so the, to, to recap basically, we're talking about the fact that um, uh, in some parts of, the, of Matthew, Jesus says, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel, yeah. but there are other parts of Matthew and Mark where he says, you know, basically talk to your disciples, go and you'll be, you should, you should preach to the lost parts of all the nations, etc. And then there's the reference to that back Yeah, but the all nations in Greek, I think it's ethering, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, can also mean tribes. Yeah, so then you're talking yeah. about the, the, the tribes of Israel that are. So it's a contradiction. <laughs> unless Jesus well, unless Jesus then, abrogated his his uh, Yeah, his it can also thing. mean tribe, but it can also mean people. And the point that we're the, the debate is okay. that in the Quran, in two surahs, I can't remember which one now, uh, Jesus being described as being assigned for all nations and all people. But, which uh, is but, the same yeah. the same wording as what's found in the Bible. So to me that's like that seems to the Quran seems to be affirming that Jesus is assigned for all nations. Yeah, but the, the Arabic word Nas can mean people, just generally, like, or it can just mean specifically, right? So just like, for example, you give the same allowance to the word Ethrei, meaning it could be nation, or it could be to all world. Similarly, the Arabic word Nas can either mean specifically, specific group of people at his time, or it can mean gen generally. But, but Allah subhanahu wa mentions that Jesus was sent to the children of Israel. And yeah, even so Jesus the, himself, yeah, but yeah. not his disciples. So, so if we go by your understanding, it leads to contradiction, it leads to absurdity. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the so things how, I'm like, yeah. how, how do you reconcile that? But isn't like, this... My, my, my yeah. way to reconcile it yeah. is that there are different... God sends different messages to different people, and essentially those messages, if you zoom out, actually, actually sometimes they will contradict. There's a surah that says, why why were we... I can't remember now, but you, you'll know this one. Um, why were we sent to different messages, and God is saying, you know, basically follow your follow, follow your, the message that we've given to each of you, and uh, in the afterlife, I will make it clear to you which one is which one is correct. No, no, no that, that's it. No, no, it's when a prophet is sent for your time, you have to accept the prophet who was given revelation by God, right? Yeah. So, in every, so Allah says. Yeah. The Quran, but so, yeah. So, so then yeah. we're, we're, talk, uh, we're talking about the fact that what does, what what is the evidence that Islam is true and the correct Christianity is not true? If you can say that Islam is true and Christianity is not true, then you would have to follow Islam. If you can't well, first of all, Jesus' mission was never universal. Like, he never claimed it. Well, he said for, for everyone. Oh, but he did. But he, he didn't. He did. But, <laughs> okay. So how do you explain okay. I was not we're, sent we're but to the Russian of Israel? Yeah, so oh, let's, let's return. Okay. The hecklers, hecklers have arrived. So, Camille, carry on. Well, I mean, so two of you as are you, talking to as, her. As so you, why can I jump in? As you, not talking do, to do, do you need two of you? To handle one lady? No, what? Uh, you will notice one thing today. No, yeah. I'm not going to say anything to this oh, heckler. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, Camille no, will. No, no, no worries. So we all know <laughs> that Jesus Christ did say that for God so loved the world, the world, they hope the world, not, not just Israel, the entire world, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This message does not extend only to the children of Israel, but to the entire world. Which is why when you see the early church, it wasn't just for the children of Israel, it went everywhere. It went to Carthage, it went to Egypt, it went to Rome, it went all around the known world at the time. So if anyone ever tries to tell you, any Da'i ever says, that Christ only came for the children of Israel because of one instance with a Canaanite woman when he was testing her faith, they are lying to you. Simple. And to top it all off, Surah 3 verse 3 and 3 verse 4 
says that Isa came with the angel on the Torah. Are you going to listen to his sermon? For mankind. Camille, are you, you going to listen to his sermon or are we so going to have a conversation? You guys can learn your Quran all you want. So you would, you, you. you would rather override the explicit statement of Jesus over... Yeah. Brother, why you to uh, brother Rahan, why are you engaging with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if right. you really want answers to our, our, our refutation of this claim, okay. someone else. Analogy. Come here, carry on. Yeah. Okay, so you go. let's, let's come back to the evidence for Islam, actually. Yeah. That's, you know, so do you do you agree when it comes to punishing punishing an adulteress or an adulterer, Christianity doesn't have the foundational framework for a complete guidance for all places at all times. Well, yeah, but uh, let, let's pause that one for a minute. But you were saying at the time Jesus was preaching his ministry to the Jews, those problems existed, right? And, therefore, and he didn't have answers to those. The law was, was there already. The law was there in the law of Moses. But apparently he abrogated them. That's where the problem is created by, is a self-inflicted create problem by Christianity. The law was already there. For adultery, for homosexuality, but for if, apostasy. But if you say that the that the law hasn't been abrogated, then Jesus' message. No, no according to the New Testament teaching, but the law has been saying, abrogated. That's a, pol that's a polism. No, no, it's not a polism. <laughs> Christian text seems to have abrogated this. Yeah. If you believe in the Christian text, you have to believe in the abrogation. If you don't believe in the Christian text, then we can have our conversation in a different manner. If you say this text abrogated it, think about what is your position. Which one are you going to take? The Christian position, the text abrogates it, or are you going to take it with a pinch of salt saying, I don't accept that text which says that. I will still say there was a law beforehand, punishment of adulteress or adulterer, homosexuality, punishments of apostasy, all there. We can still apply that. Because yeah, these, things, that's, that's these things were common even yeah, back then. Yeah, exactly. And God common. sent proof and yeah, so you revelations. Can, you can, you can in, if you do that, if you do that, you have to abandon the Christian text. You have to say Christian text is false because it's abrogating that. But, but you said yourself that there's lots of problems with the Christian text with lots of interpolation. No, no, it's not my position. When you are establishing in our discussion, from this you want to establish for yourself whether the Christianity has a truthful basis of its teaching. If you now go back to the Old Testament text to, to go to a solution for these problems, when it goes against the Christian text, then you have to say the Christian message is false. You cannot have both. The Christian message you have to say false, and then you say, oh, now no, I have... I don't think it's quite as simple. You can say the Christian message was not fully... You know, if it says it's abrogated, then you have no solution. Correct. Well, okay, so if you want a solution, you have to go back to the Old Testament. If you go back to the Old Testament, then Christianity is false, because it has abrogated it, and you have no solution. But if it's a very, very difficult situation for Christians when it comes to these examples. Well, no, other ways to derive the, the potential solution. To like, the, okay, like give me law. give me an example of scriptural support for a punishment for adultery, because that's I'm, look. You, so, okay, so the reason I'm focused on this yeah. because these are well-known examples. I didn't invent them. I'm sure hundreds of people before me has mentioned them. So, so I'm just illustrating something which is tried and tested discussion between Christians and Muslims. But I'm saying, so for instance, in, in Islam. Uh, Are we discussing Islam or Christianity? We, we need to discuss Christianity to see whether it's yeah, universal yeah, or not. Yeah, but I'm just, just saying, drawing a parallel with how you would do it in Islam. To okay. To see that, that fine, fine. Um, Islam, the Quran hasn't um, established every single punishment for every single crime on this, on this earth, right? There's some that are well defined and some that have not been defined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. So there's a way within Islam to derive those modern punishments, right? There's like the whole, the whole set of pr principles behind the show. Principles, there are principles behind yeah, it. Principles and Correct. And specific guidance is being derived. Yes. Like scholars, etc. Right? Yeah. yeah. So why? No, no. Islam, as I said, there are four to five sources of Islamic law: yeah. the Quran, the Sunnah, the Ijma of the companions, the Qiyas or analogical deduction, and also some people say Maslaha of the community. Right? Based on all of these four, yeah. when it comes to deriving laws from the Christian text, what is the source foundation principle in which one can say? Adultery, if someone commits, this is what has well, to be done I, with them. I, I don't have enough knowledge about the, the way... Ask that the heckler, for, just for now. <laughs> but, but I don't, I don't have enough See if he has the answer. Go, 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 go ask the heckler. But, but hang on, just, let me just ask on, on this. I don't have enough specific... Um, the heckler is going to remain that. silent because there is no solution. Hey, <laughs> no, no, so no, friend, but there is, worry, but there is such a thing like in, in Christianity. Adultery is also a capital sin, right? Sorry? Adultery in Christianity is also a capital sin. But what's the punishment? Well, I don't know about this specific punch, but there is a thing within... Camille no, no, it's not about... It's not about... I, I don't know enough about... Camille, Camille, I agree with you yeah. 
the ontological status of certain crimes inside of God can be given. Like seeing a woman with lust is committing adultery in the heart. But there is no punishment saying do a heart surgery and remove the heart, for example, or remove the eyes. There is nothing there. There is no consequence of but, that but, no, no, sin. So there's no, there's no specific consequence, but that doesn't mean there's no consequence. They How do you them. establish peace and tranquility on this so, okay, earth so, on a practical level? Let me give you an example. So in the Quran, when you, um, you, it says that you shouldn't eat pork, right? Okay. But there's no punishment that specifies if you don't eat pork. If you, eat pork, if you, if you don't eat pork, yes. Principles of Islam, because it's sin and sinful, yeah. can be derived. It could it be from the. Derived, it could yeah. be from no. It could be as I said, particularly this example. If I don't know personally, it could be from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Whoever ate pork, for example, he could have punished. The companion could have punished, and so on and so yeah. forth. So we have all of this example at place. I'm sure some people will just yeah. say, "Yeah, there is something there, President." Okay, but, but when it comes to no, because these are foundational principles existing in our source of law. In Christianity, the source of law is not the people's own mind. It has to be foundationally rooted well, in the, the church in Christianity. Yeah, church, and so if, if the Pope decides, you would agree? Yeah, but that, whatever. So, Do you agree with that? Well, I mean, I have lo as I said before, I have lots of issues with Christianity. So if you don't, then but, you can't apply that. We have to be consistent. It, no, but that's how it is derived, and that's a valid way. Whether you agree or not, that's a different answer. That's a different question. Sorry, but it is a valid way of deriving law to say we have the text and then we have the church. Okay, according to the Pope, what's the punishment? For what? Adultery. For adultery, I'm not sure actually, but it might be excommunicated. Does anyone know? I mean, just for, this is for sake of yeah, information for both of us, I don't know, and Camille doesn't know. Well, 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 does does anyone know according to the Pope? Uh, no, no, um, no, 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 no interjection. He can only say what the punishment is, and that's it. I don't like hecklers. That for some reason the Bible has to have a detailed list of punishments for crimes, implying that Christ didn't come here to free us from sin, but actually he came here to establish some sort of like Jewish potential system on earth, which is not what Christ came to do. So the standard he is placing. He, he answered your question already. He did not come to do jurisprudential system. He answered you already. There's no point going any further. Because Christ said himself that his kingdom. Thank you, Heckler. You, you, you helped her to understand and appreciate. That's why yeah. friendly Heckler. That's why most of the try to make that supposedly they have a complete system. No, they don't. It's a made up system. There are always new scenarios that pop up and they have no answers. So you have to go to the random pool of Mars to make up a solution to it. We don't make yeah, up yeah, solutions. I mean, so, so I, now, the, the, so that, that's like the, the way he's describing did, is. The, did you understand? But, but yeah, yeah, but that's there is point. no jurisprudential system. Thank Christ you. came he, with he, he, a complete. He, he, that he, is he, now he, answering to the question that does Christianity have a solution when it comes to yes. crime and punishment? There isn't anything so there is on a practical right. level. There is not. You marry to Christ, and your solution is solved. Exactly. You see, that's what I mean. Following the laws is redundant. That's my whole point. Can I talk? Yes. <laughs> Camille, go ahead. Okay. So yes, in the Bible there isn't specific punishment, etc. But if you look at the guidance of, the, say, the Catholic Church, adultery is forbidden. You know. Like, no, no. I'm not talking about. I'm not, forbidden, like, I'm not talking about the status of a crime, but whether it's crime or not. I'm talking about punishment. Yeah. Crime but without punishment. You don't need punishment. I'll, I'll tell you something. Ah, uh, uh, Camille, this is where I have to re really explain a little bit. No, no punishment. When there, no, no. Of course, there will be punishment. But there's a punishment in Yahweh. No, 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 no. There, there probably will be. In an Islamic state, if somebody goes and starts eating pork and sells pork and so on, there will be okay, consequences. But that's, not, that's not found in the Quran. No, look, look, as I said, Quran is not the only source of Islamic okay, law. So, it's, so but where does it come from? It comes from. Do you agree in principle? If we have crimes with no punishment, would it increase the crime, decrease the crime, or it will remain the crime rate the same? If there are crimes, and there is no punishment associated with this crime, my question to you is threefold. Would it increase the crime, decrease the crime, or neutral, it doesn't increase or decrease the crime? I don't understand your question. Imagine now, a crime is about murder. Murder. Uh -huh. Someone murders someone. If there is no punishment of murder in a society, would murder increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay, so what is the, is the punishment is a deterrence to the behavior. Is no, no. Okay, well? Essentially, we, you will come to... But do you agree crime without its associate punishment is not going to make the society any better? Society to thrive and function, you need... 
Well, yeah, but it depends whether the punishment is in this life or in the other life. No, 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 I'm talking about this life, yeah, this, life. But, yeah, this life. This yeah, life. Yeah, in a practical level, take the example of murder. If somebody commits murder, one person, two person, whole community, all the black people murdered, all the Chinese murdered, all the white people murdered, all the Bengalis murdered, whatever, right? If murder takes place and there is no associate, associated punishment, my question to you to explore, would murder as a crime increase, decrease or remain the same? It would increase. It would increase. Agree. Anyone disagree with her? No, but no Why? one agree with me. Everyone agrees with you. Oh, they agree with you. I said anyone disagree, disagree. The reason why, because those people who have something in their heart, a feeling against other person, they will murder that person because there is no accountability. There is no consequence. There is no punishment. There is no deterrent. That is why if there was a punishment associated with it, it will make this into a check. Either stops it altogether, minimizes it or decreases the crime. Yes. It will never increase. That's why Islam, Camille, yeah. Camille, yeah, yeah. do you agree now in Christianity, because there is no punitive penal system, it doesn't have a practical solution to decrease crime. Well, the, 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 practical, the practical solution, which I think actually Islam also, also agrees with, that ultimately it's not about the world, the, you know... The no, it's about this world. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina Oh Lord, oh our Lord, give us the good in this world and in the hereafter and save us from the punishment of hellfire. So. As Muslims, we follow how to live our life in this world as best as we can with justice, fairness, compassion, mercy, truthfulness, and also think about our ultimate abode in the hereafter. We don't just simply become ascetic, go into a mountain cave and li live like a, uh, what's called, an ascetic. We don't do that. So, so Islam caters the need of this world as there was a need of the hereafter. Yeah. In Christianity, as we say, because it doesn't cater for a practical solution to the practical problems of this world, here or in an Amazonian jungle community, or two billion years later if the world was still alive, to be, people to be remained there, in the absence or the lack of a practical solution, Christianity cannot be universalized religion, and that is why it cannot be a true religion that you are talking about. That is why Islam, which claims to be the finality of religion, the complete religion, the religion which is for all times and all places, it becomes the one for people to reflect on to accept. Come here. Do you agree? Christianity doesn't have a practical solution to adultery. Yeah, but so, as we were saying at the beginning, it's not because the religion has all of the answers. Hey, just, just to the solution that it makes it. It's not about a, a religion which claims to be from God to be a final religion. It must have a solution. Do you agree? I mean, so for instance, if you, again, if you take all the examples that you gave, there's no Christian that would advocate for, you know, adultery, you know, uh, murder, or any, you know, they are practical. How Christians do we deal with them? Uh, so when someone commits an adultery in a Christian family okay, today, so what, what, Islam, what, what is the solution Islam of this problem? In, in the UK, you still abide by the law of the land, right? You abide by the law. We all, every Muslims are striving to establish the law of God on this earth. It's not just in Saudi Arabia or in Pakistan, in this world. It was implemented at one time, but it got dismantled because of internal and external yeah, but things. Yeah, yeah, but, but we are striving to bring it back because we know that's what the solution is. In the meantime, we are contracted in certain countries to be, to be what? You know, faithful to the contracts that we have. But that doesn't mean we consider to be this is the best solution. We know what the solution is. We're striving towards it. That is the solution. Christianity doesn't have a solution yeah, instead does. the solution it has but is one about what that I mean, you let the adulteries go free right come here just want to answer the heckless point an adulterous woman came adulterous woman came right oh people brought her to be punished guess what christ did okay. there was a law that was beforehand righty, righty. if anyone commits adultery you should stone her to death right okay. So what did Christ do as a judge, as a man appointed on earth to implement God's law 
Did he implement the law that was I'm given sorry. by God earlier? Christ Did he stone her to death? Did he implement the laws of God? Christ came with the law of God. Christ came to say, Oh, our Lord, who Christ came here to free us. Camille, do, do you remember? I'm not speaking to him now, I'm speaking to you. Do you remember the Lord's Prayer? Your kingdom come. Thine will be done. Thine will be done. The will of God to be done. Where? On earth. Right. So Christ, if he's here as a representative of God, whether as a prophet, a warner, or a messenger, he's here as God on earth, not a he, he needs to implement the no, law when a crime is committed. Spirit. Imagine so now, okay, imagine. In the Bible where it says imagine God. I want you to have a thought experiment. Okay, I'm just come this way. Yeah, oh, no, I'm not talking to him. Camille, I'm not speaking to him. Camille, if you find it's distracting, you need to tell him off. Tell him off if it's distracting. If God came on earth, Brother, one second. Try to understand one thing. Imagine God, in a certain belief system, came on earth and there were crimes being committed. Um, um, Camille, Camille, are you going to be dictated by your conversation? Camille, are you going to be dictated? Thank you. Um, I think it's right time you tell him off not to interfere with your discussion. I think it's right time that we tell you off, Master. We're talking too much. Keep quiet for a second. If it's distracting, we can have another time. Right. So the scenario I am illustrating, if God came on earth in a belief system, and there are crimes being committed, crimes of murder, rape, and so on and so forth, right? Stealing. Let's take the three examples. Murder, rape, and stealing. God on earth, he comes here and he says, I am not going to do any implementation of punishment. That's not my job. That's not my role. That's not my mission. He, what he's going to do? He's going to let them go and say, you know what? You punish them according to your, your secular laws, not my laws. Does that make sense? Would it make sense if God was to do things like that. Yeah, but ultimately, secular laws... Are no, 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 think about it. God on earth, imagine now God on earth, right? There's God over there on earth. But I don't he's, he, that no, 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 no. Just to understand the scenario that Christians are bringing. Yeah. God is over there. Everyone knows he's God. Let's say for the sake of argument. And people are stealing, raping, killing people, right? Now, these criminals, what's going to happen to them? God on earth doesn't do anything. In fact, people then, instead of going to God, oh God, what I'm going to do? Are you going to punish them or not? God, without any information from God, they go to Caesar. They go to this leader, that leader, that king. Would that make any sense? Would that make any sense? I think it could make sense. I have a question for you. Can we take that question if you don't mind? All right. She's not a heckler. Not on my list. I don't know much about Muhammad, but so Muhammad, if he was on earth, and somebody did something, Muhammad would punish them? Not himself. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa being, when he was a state leader, there would have been a system of governance, laws and for punishment and crime. And based on that, being a state person... But Muhammad wouldn't punish No, 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 no. It's not... It's not in, I, I'm answering. Not individually, because he has established a state in which there will be a judge, there will be a judge in which the crime will be established and then the punishment on an established criminal will be implemented. But don't you think that's the same in Christianity? Because they have the... Te we have, I I'm non-religious, by the way. Mm. Used to be a Catholic, so, you know. But so we have the Ten Commandments that we shouldn't do these things. You know, so don't you think it's a similar, so the example, similar thing? It's not similar. I would, I would wish it was like that, but it's not in practical level. So the example, the practical level, if someone now commits adultery, Right. Having sexual relations outside marriage, right. Christianity does not offer a punishment for this criminal behavior. It's okay, so let's just say, let's just say right here in England, On this line. let's just say right here in England, and a woman, you know, a Muslim woman mm. commits adultery, you're going to stone her to death in England? No, no, I'm not asking for what punishment. So. I'm saying, according to the law of God, how does the law of God take care of instability in a society? No, 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 it's not me in, in uh, my. I'm asking you a question. I mean, I, answer I, is this. I, the answer is this. Yes. Christianity does not offer a solution. But neither does the, neither does the Muslim religion. In we England. have a solution. In no, in England, Muslims are not in power. Muslims. I'm truthfully curious. I really am. Muslims are not in power 
in a legislative sense in England, right. where they do not implement the Islamic law right. and implement crime there and punishment system. No, 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 no. Not, not, in, not in the legislative body. This country is not run by Sharia law. Yes. So because of the absence of the Sharia law, Muslims cannot expect the adulterers to be punished in the Islamic way because it's not run by Islamic law. It's a secular country. But if you have a country in which they implement Islamic law, they can implement the punishment to an adulteress. So the question we were talking about... Do you think in this day and age now mm. that most Muslim men... The question is not about the modality of punishment, the question is about whether there is a punishment and can it be implemented to stabilize the society. Islam as a holistic, to give you an example, can I, and then I'll come back to Camille, okay. Islam gives a system of, for example, you know what, you cannot steal, because stealing is taking away the rights of another person. And stealing carries after it's established that this person didn't have a need to steal and it was secured under lock and key and he broke or she broke and that lock and key and stole it it wasn't like you know hanging off million pounds in the back pocket and walking in the public it wasn't like that it was from a safe locked under lock and key and it was all the security measures the one who stole he was not a billionaire with no need or, 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 sorry he was not someone who was like a poor person with a need and so on and so forth right all of that things, and once crime is established, this person will be punished by cunning of the hands. Right. right. Now, if it is established that this person stole a bread from a supermarket because they were dying of starvation, no food, no one offered, no neighbor offered food for him to live, no state as a body gave him this food, the punishment of cutting the hands would not be applicable, cannot be applied. Anyone disagree? Anyone disagree? Raise your hands. Look around. Okay. How many Muslims are there? Raise your hands. How many? Muslims. And how many of you disagreed? No one. Why? Because we. He's not a Muslim. <laughs> so now, as you realize, there are conditions. You can ignore him. He's a heckler. There are, there are conditions. Well, uh, I cannot, I, I'm trying to answer you, but he's distracting. So, so there are conditions which need to be met before punishment is implemented. But the fact of the matter is, when the system of governance is in place, it cannot be only crime and punishment, it has to be holistic. Education system, social system, moral system, all of that. Because people need to be, people need to be educated that stealing is wrong. You cannot punish someone without telling them stealing is wrong. But don't we as a society, I mean, given religion different, everybody knows you shouldn't steal. But, whether you're religious or not but, religious. But, okay, but the issue is not everyone steals. Right. So those who steal, we need to deal with them to prevent them from stealing your money, your house, your jewelry. We need to stop doing that because you have your right of your own property. That should not be... You don't think the laws of the land are enough? They're not sufficient. <laughs> That's why Islam has a complete solution. So, so if I... If I if you turn to, Camille, Camille. So the example I've given you demonstrates, demonstrates Christianity of today doesn't have the foundational principles of being an universal religion. Let's, let's come back to the like, prescriptions of the religion, maybe in the future discussion. But I wanted to come back actually to the different topic. Sure, sure. Okay, everyone, pay attention. Back on track. Pay attention, everyone, to Camille. Brother, don't speak to a heckler. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Camille. I was waiting for that. All right. Anyway, so so the thing I'm actually interested in right now is like the evidence for Islam, right? So we talked about last time we talked about the prophecies, the miracles, and we talked about the. Why aren't there evidence for Islam? 
Why are they not evidence for Islam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so one, you said... Bye -bye. Take care. So, I mean... Um, before you go, sorry, sorry, before you go. Just one second, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. We would, from the bottom of our heart, invite you to look into Islam and accept Islam, become a Muslim, which is surrendering yourself to the will of God. I don't believe in any religion. No. It's not about religion, it's about knowing the one who created you and thanking and being grateful to that creator. Because you and I know, I did not create the universe, right. I, neither I, did you. Yeah. So it's to be thankful and grateful to that creator of ours. And we say this is the one who is worthy of our worship. Well, I'm interested in all religions, yeah, yeah. to be honest. So, this is, clear. so the know, one who's I'm worthy of our everything. worship, the one who's worthy of our worship, is the one that we are asking you to embrace him and follow the law and the will and the guidance to that, and that is Islam. If you didn't know much about it, I'm sure my friends and my brothers and sisters are more than willing to explain to you. Because I'm, because I'm engaged here, not engaged in the sense, but in a conversation. I'll come um, back next Sunday and, and we, we can have a talk discussion. But please speak to my, my brothers and my, uh, my sisters over there. Right? Bye. You take care. Until and, then. And so I would like to say, by the way, thank you for your time. Thank you for, for taking that time with me. Right. I really appreciate it. And appreciate despite all of the you know, heckling it's going okay. on, <laughs> it's, it's an enjoyable discussion for us. At least. I'm doing that genuinely in the, in the spirit of truth. I'm not here to you know, cut anything or yeah, yeah, anyone down. I'm sure. just really interested in what you've got to say. I will push back if I don't, you know, if, you, if you, what I think you're saying doesn't make sense to me. But How, would it be interested if you didn't have any counter back? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you agreed with everything, you would be Muslims by 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 all then. But at the end of the day, we would like you to become a Muslim, and that's why I'm I'm willing to take your pushbacks and and try to answer them as you go along. All right. So I wanted to come back to prophecies, as in the the, the actual kind of evidence. Mm. Um, for Islam, r r yeah. if you take away the prescriptions and stuff like that. So this, um, I mean, prophecy and miracles don't really speak to me in general. Like I think I, okay. I think, and that also applies to biblical miracles, by the way. Okay. Like I don't think that those are particularly, sure. I don't really resonate with that. But just for sake of argument, one point that you mentioned last time, you mentioned this book of 500 miracles that the prophet did. I said 300 miracles. 300, yeah. sorry. But the Quran itself states, I think, several times that there are no signs given to Muhammad. No, like, this is what we explained before as well. This is what the, the, the Quranic picture of what a miracle is. Anytime miracle is sent, people try to, people in their habitual nature, they disbelieve in the miracles. So God says, Ma mana'aka. Nothing has prevented me from sending miracles except the people of the past disbelieve in them. So in general, God is not willing to provide miracles and miracles to make, to, to make people believe because people in their nature, they disbelieve in the miracles. So even when he sends miracles, they keep on disbelieving in it. That's point number one. Point number two, God does not give in to people's demand of miracles. They say, okay, you know what? Give me a mountain of gold, I will believe, for example. He's not going to give in to these kind of miracles because these are silly claims people want to make. Even if what it was, the, because the Quran says, even if there were mountains of gold, stairs going up to heaven, the dead were to speak, they will still not believe. Because belief is not just what they are demanding miracles for as a belief. It's something which is in their heart, the stubbornness and arrogance and pride and many of their psyche, the ego, that's the problem. Not about the evidence. So, Quran does not in any way say, oh, Prophet Muhammad was not going to be given any miracles. The Quran says miracles is a matter of time. But it will never be given according to their dictates. And the Quran says that when the miracles are given, the ayat are given, the example I've given you about He's splitting the moon. When they see the sign, they say this is, you know, this is a, this is a magic, you know, perpetual magic, and so on. So miracles were performed by the prophet. The Quran does not somehow say no, it didn't. The Quran affirms that was the case. But people's reaction is it's magic, and the Quran reprimands them, like you know, what what's there for you not to believe? You see it within your own eyes, and you disbelieve. So these are the people that really we're going to have to have a good accountability in the hereafter because seeing something in front of their eyes which it cannot be accounted for as a natural thing that people do like magic and things like that some people are learned this trick when they could see clearly if you and i were there and the sea parted by the staff of prophet musa Camille, are you going to just say let me rub my eyes you know what am i saying am i Oh, am I be having some kind of delusions with some narcotic gas? You're not going to see that. You see that on front of your face. This is called Ainul Yaqeen. This is your truth, reality of your own eyes. You saw that in your own eyes. You are not going to question like, oh, this didn't happen. 
that will be an evidence against you at that point if you didn't believe in it. So when miracles do happen, and some people just disbelieve in them by saying this is a magic, like they did with Christ and they did with Moses, these people will really have no excuse in the day of judgment. In that judgment day, they will have to account, okay, here, that was an evidence in front of you. Why did you disbelieve and reject the evidence? What are they going to say? Oh, I was deluded? Because there will be no counter back, there will be no pushback from them because they cannot argue against it. Because you could not explain that this was not a miracle performed by a prophet and a messenger. That's what we are talking about. Quran affirms miracles of the prophet. And the, one of the examples I've given you, the Quran clearly says, is about splitting the moon. When they see, when they see, That's they see that. Uh, the Quran does Ignore not the heckler. I'm not, I'm not, that. No, no, don't even fact, listen to the heckler. Commentators say that that's a sign of the end times, not Muhammad doing it. So Look, actually, you're right, Camille. Camille? There here. is nowhere in, in the Quran where it says that. So this is, the, this is the chapter here. It talks about the miracles of, of, of uh, Musa, of Isa, even Abraham, but not Muhammad. It's Surah 54, verse 1. Our junior and the moon did rent asunder. It's well, happened, Muhammad, right? Yeah. Nowhere. Yeah. You could even read the theme of Quran yeah. uh, this, by Sayyid Maldudi. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take this example out of no, thin no, blue. Muhammad. Historical event. And it hasn't happened yet. When they see a miracle, they turn aside and they say transient magic. Where's Muhammad nine times? Wa and they call a lie and they disbelieve. This Where's is Muhammad? in past tense. And follow their Low desires and their affair has to be appointed term. So when so when they saw this, yeah. the they called it magic and they disbelieved in it. Yeah, but he's got a point in that Muhammad. What, what? It's, Muhammad it's, not, it's not a, a performed specifically by Muhammad. Hang on. Who did this miracle? Well, according to Sayyid Maldi. No, no, no. In here, a Indian, during the time of the Prophet, Quran the Quran was given to him, century. right? And he's doing that. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to be so hyper-skeptical, we're going to say the Prophet didn't exist, he didn't say this, all the hadith are not... Try to understand. The hadith that talks about that this is a historical event that took place like this nature, this is the reaction of his people, we're going to disbelieve... Exactly, see? Hadith came later, Quran came later. How much are we going to dismantle this skepticism of the, the, the historians which are known as revisionists? Revisionism is a school of thought in historical criticism in which they try to re reject all of the historical details and say, ah, maybe he didn't exist. Maybe the people didn't exist. Maybe Mecca didn't exist. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. They're even talking about saying Mecca didn't exist. Subhanallah, the Prophet didn't exist. So what do we say about these people? The hyper-skeptic revisionist, you are against the historical memory of the people, going against the data. We have historical data of a place, of the people, and their artifacts, and their beliefs, and their systems, and their writings. All of it. How much do you want? Writings after writing, in inscriptions, in papyri, in, in, in writings and later works. No sane historian would doubt, for example, Prophet Muhammad Sallam existed and he preached in Arabia and he had this kind of belief about him. No sane wonder. Hyperskeptic, revisionist, fruitcakes may believe in that. Just like hyperskeptic, revisionist, fruitcakes believe Jesus did not exist. Yeah, oh, mean, he accepts Jesus all, doesn't all exist that, because... He didn't claim yeah, to Camille, Camille. Not engage, not engage with him. No, that's that's right. Come with me. You're right. You're right. I'm corrected. So you can't help me. We help agree me. there are Christians, because of this consistency approach, they will say, because we have a historian who doubts the existence of Christ, Christ didn't exist. They need to be consistent. So now maybe that is the view. Christianity didn't exist. All of these writings, come on, doesn't matter. Do you see the point? Cakes. So yeah. that's why, that's why we call them fruitcakes because these are hyper skeptics. They go against history. So when it comes to miracles, when it comes to miracles, what happens when the Quran says the crucified? Isn't that being a good Go for it, boys. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. No worries. Do you understand English? She said, "Go away." No, say in Arabic, Mansour, please. She said, "Go away." In Arabic, Mansour. Appreciate it. Go away. go away. She said go away, not me. She said go away. No problem. Go for it. She said go away. 
Alright, so you were saying. She, he has no respect for you. It's okay, but this, that's what hackers do. I'm sure there's some, you know, Right, really I agree. I agree <laughs> that you've understood. Now we're on the same boat that you agree that he's a heckler. Good. So now we move on. So. But, but to say, there's probably, you know, I don't know about. So that book about 300 authentic miracles, you, in your mind, is this. The Quran denies the miracle performed by the Prophet so how can he have done miracles? As I explained to you, the Quran does not deny. The Quran denies what thing? Miracles as expected by people, demanded by people. God doesn't give in to this kind of things. God gives his own miracle. And that's why you will find within the Christian text, there's one point Christ said, I think I mentioned this before, no sign will be given to you except the sign of Jonah. So Christ himself make a condition. I'm not going to give you all the signs that you demand.